it's time for the monthly time lapse. And this time I am doing a still life in acrylics and giving you six tips on how you can improve your values. As you can see, it's getting kind of late and I'm just warning you, I might have a little problems being coherent because my brain feels painfully slow right now and it's late, so duh. Anyway, if you watched last video, you'll know that I am not very proficient at acrylic painting yet. Um, especially the blending aspect of it. I'm not very good at blending right now, so I struggle with it a bit in this painting. As you probably won't see because it's a time lapse, and time lapses make everything look so easy, so fast, so fluid. But trust me, I I did not blend this as well as I wanted to, and I was kind of tempted to go back and blend it better, but that would probably take like several more hours, and you know, that wasn't the point of this painting. The point of this painting was to work on my values and just do a little study and give you something to watch. And the point of me using acrylic paints wasn't to get perfect blending, it was to get a little more comfortable with the medium. And this time I was actually using some of my more expensive paints. I was using a little bit of my cheap paints mixed in there, but I was using my more expensive paints, so I feel like I can give myself a little leeway because they work a little different. Anyway, that was a ramble. Let's get into the points before I get any more distracted. My first tip for you today is one that I'm following, um, and that is to draw or paint in black and white. Um, and this is two reasons. The first one is simply that if you have color to also think about, it just makes it kind of harder for you to really focus on improving your values and get as much out of that as you possibly can. The second reason is that colors are very deceptive sometimes. Um, I'll touch on this a little more later. But, for example, if you have a really saturated color, it's going to look a lot lighter than it actually is. If you take that saturated color and you um, make it grayscale, it's probably going to be more of a mid-tone than a bright. At least more so than you think it might be. Um, and here's just this little bonus tip for you. If you're drawing in black and white and your reference photo is in color, do yourself a favor and take that reference photo and put it in a photo editor. It could just be the photo editor in your photo library or whatever, the one that comes with your computer. Take it and make it grayscale and it will just make it so much more easier for your brain to translate grayscale into grayscale rather than color into grayscale for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Uh, the second tip is that if your piece does have color, take a picture of it, use that photo editor to make it grayscale, and, well, look at it. Does your photo, and um, does your drawing, I should say, still make sense? Because color, it, it adds this extra level of, I guess, understandability. It separates things. If something is green, it's going to look a lot... it's going to stand out a lot from something that's red, for example. Um, but having colors being the one that's separating everything is not going to necessarily strengthen your piece as much as having good values are going to. So, yeah. If your drawing looks kind of weird, well, that kind of ties into my next point, um, and that is, once again, take your handy-dandy photo editor and make your photo grayscale, your drawing. Do you see a running theme here? And then hype up the contrast and just ask yourself, does it look better? And if it looks better, hype up the contrast in your drawing. It means your values are not strong enough, maybe your lights aren't light enough, maybe your darks aren't dark enough. Whatever it is, fix it. And this just basically takes the risk out of experimenting on your actual piece because then you can just look in the photo editor and go, oh yeah, that looks better. Okay, now I can do it. Or you can go, wow, that looks terrible. I should not have you up the contrast. And then your drawing is saved. Um, uh, tip number four is use a value finder. And if you don't know what a value finder is, there's one on screen for you. You're welcome. Um, 
basically what you use this thing to do is you, you put it over a given piece in your reference photo, a given section, and match it to whatever value it is. And you could call this cheating, but I think it's, it's really just helping your eye to see and just making it easier for you. And you know what? Doing art is not necessarily about making everything as hard for yourself as possible and making yourself do all of the work. You can use these little cheap things like photo editors and <laughs> value finders. Anyway, uh, tip number five is to simplify your values. And this might, like, what if your goal is realism? What if you do realism? Well, why would you want to simplify your values? I mean, it won't look realistic then. Um, if you look at a human face, it has values all over the scale. It, it's so complex, there's so many different things going on there. Well, if you do, if you simplify your values, it will help you understand the importance of values. And understanding the importance is the first step to really learning how to do it right, I guess. Um, it's kind of like in school where they teach you all these subjects and then they don't really tell you how you're going to apply it to your life. And you're like, wait, why am I learning this? And then you don't care about it and then you don't really learn. Maybe you do learn it, but it's kind of like you just know it. And then in a situation where it's not just whatever you were taught. Okay, I'm just rambling. I don't know. Did that make sense? It's late, okay? Get off my back. Or... <laughs> the point is, it can help and you should try it. By the way, I am awful at doing that. I am awful at simplifying values. I was trying to do it in this piece and I did it a bit to a degree, but... <laughs> Not nearly what I was going for. So, maybe I should do that sometime. I, <laughs> uh, but every time I try, it's just like, no, but that's not, this is, it's not exactly right. I have to get it exactly right. And then, then it just, suddenly my values aren't simplified. But yeah, um, another thing is, even if your goal isn't realize, realism, I mean, even if it is realism, sorry, um, it can help you know when to stop obsessing over the details. Sometimes details don't matter. Sometimes if you miss that one little spot right there, it's going to be okay and it's not really going to add a lot to the piece if you get it anyway, so you should just kind of learn to let go sometimes. And it's not going to suddenly look unrealistic. And you're going to save a lot of time and a lot of trouble if you do that. That's just if you're as obsessive over details as I am, but yeah. And Lastly, tip number six, everyone's favorite tip ever because it's just so helpful, and that is practice. I feel like I'm kind of beating a dead horse with this one. I also feel like it's kind of an annoying thing to say because whenever you ask artists for advice and you're like, hey, so um, how do I improve on this art thing? And they're like, huh, just do it. And you're like, okay, well, that's not exactly what I meant. And I'm like, you know, like, how do I go about that exactly? And they're like, just practice. But it is true. It is true. The tips are there to help guide you with the practicing, to know what exactly to practice and how exactly to practice it, or, well, ideas on how to practice it. And then it's your job to go out there and practice. It, it, it feels like such a dead horse. <laughs> like beating a dead horse. But I feel like I just have to say it because it's what artists say, and it's, I mean, it's also true, so. Um... I'm missing some footage here. Apparently I didn't hear the little sound the camera makes when it's shutting off. Um, in this case, because the card was full. So you missed out on me painting water. And after that, I kind of decided, you know what, I'm just not going to film the rest because it was basically just me touching up on little details. And well, to be honest, I just didn't really feel like doing it. And my, um, my disc on my computer is almost full because of all the video footage I have. So they're just like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a break and just call it quits. And you can see the final piece on screen here and that will just have to do. Before I ramble for any longer, <laughs> thanks for watching the video, guys. Um, Let me know what kind of videos, like time lapses, do you wanna see from me in the future? Um, I have a whole list of things that I kinda wanna do and talk about and experiment with. Um, but, you know, I'm always curious to see what you actually want to see. And, you know, if you leave me a suggestion, I'll probably do it. Maybe not right away. Maybe in, like, a year. 
because <laughs> I'm such a procrastinator. But I probably will do them, so you should tell me. That's it for today. Have fun practicing your values and making your drawings and paintings a better. <laughs>